I can look at you, man. I can look at you. Look <laughs> at you. Look at that smile. Um, welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you. Um, How are you doing? I tell you, I think we're doing all right. Um, let me tell you about what we got you into here, why we're doing this. I talk about this a lot on the show, but I never get tired of talking about it. COVID hits. I'm in San Francisco. It's February. Stanford, Google, Twitter, everyone is starting to tell you go home. A month later, I am hysterically crying on my, well, I don't know about hysterically, but I'm crying on my couch because the world has gotten me down. I'm not sick. I don't have COVID. I'm just sad. I called my mentor. My mentor said, there's more people like you that are sad. And I think you need to reach out and just start having conversations, bringing people together because they needed a hug just like you need a hug. Right? It's just bad stuff. We're all adults. And I said, you know, that's great. I know Zoom. Zoom is not new for me. Skype is not new for me. It's like, I understand these things. But I'm not a Zoom coffee person or a cocktail person. That's just not me. And I just, so I just called a few people. And we just started just having conversations, hanging out 10 to turn to 100, 100 to 1,000. I think last week we just hit like 13,000 people in this community. It's crazy. Nice. So it's too big. It's just too big, right? So I then decided to start a podcast. I've never podcasted. I never broadcasted. I never knew about lighting, sound, nothing. And I figured the goal here is if I can have a really meaningful podcast, a, a few things can happen. One, people can listen and learn, which is nice. The guests can amplify their brand, which is nice. Then based on this, I know of the 13,000 people who I can maybe make other connections with you, for you, together. You don't have to Zoom with them. You can email them. You could. I don't care, but that's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm just saying I'm so grateful that you want to spend your time with me because I still think I need this more than you. But at the end of the day... If we both give each other a hug, it's a great, it's just, it's a both win. So that's, that's why we're here. No, I sincerely appreciate one, you reaching out and two, doing this for everyone again. Like everyone has ideas, but there is not a, like actually converting some of those ideas into actions and actually doing it and growing a community of 13,000 people is just an incredible feat. So I congratulate you on that one. Yeah. They're all our brothers and sisters. I mean, they're all data enthusiasts. And like the thread that I'm trying to bring in is everything needs to be mindful, empathetic, skewed towards introvert, right? So, I mean, I think I know where we sit and they're a little bit too comfortable being home. I mean, the skewed introvert, they're like, my life hasn't changed. I've been working remote for 20 years. I like, I'm like, so there's a lot of people that, but they still want to, to meet. They still like to have a human connection. They're okay being home with headphones. But so my first question is, I always try to begin of this year to the best of your memory, right? How did you survive mentally? I don't know if you did good or bad last year. What was <laughs> your hacks? Right. What was, and then we'll get into the data stuff, but just the human element. I want to learn from you. I would like to share what I've heard, but how did you get out of bed? How did you survive last year? Darren, I wouldn't say it was easy. Um, like everybody else, getting into a remote work is not easy. But for me, uh, my not star has always been the purpose, purpose of the company that I'm working for, the uh, products and impact that we're delivering to the business and, and people. So, the purpose, products, and people got me going. And um, the most so important purpose, thing for me has... Purpose, product, products, and people. people. But again, there's no order there. It's just, we're just saying purpose, products, it's, and people, right? Exactly. So now when you have this pandemic, purpose is very important, right? Because if I think more than ever purpose, whether you work, I've got my belief, people, yes. Product is also, it's important to do what you love, but I just purpose. I, I, I that's for me. I, I wonder if it's like, yes, if I had to re rank it, I, you know, I'm, there is no ranking. We didn't have your ranking. I'm just using it as a ranking, but, um, God purpose. I would put like, I need purpose. I don't for me in my life, I need purpose. Yeah, that's good. I can't agree with you more there. 
it's Good. it's incredible that that we have we have some passion for what we are driving and then the purpose of who we are as individuals and the companies that we work for and what those companies represent is is definitely a big portion of what you what you bring to the table day in and day out and how you get up from your bed every yeah. day now did you uh, for purpose i want to dig in there for a second um, do you journal do you meditate what was their self was their self reflection did you realign purpose are you more spiritual now just walk me through again this was an interesting time i want to learn everyone's been home everyone's still home how did you you know really hone in on purpose this past year yeah, i guess uh, i have actually picked up a new music instrument i've started to learn indian flute um made out of bamboo and it is uh, it is really soothing it helped me focus it helped me learn a new thing uh keep me energized keep me yeah. uh, rather kept me energized and engaged and a a diversity in in that what what life brings to to us in this kind of you know uh boring lockdown situations and the other piece of it is of music um focus on focus on health and being able to run around <laughs> yeah no, and 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 focus on health has been another big thing and then even virtually keeping in touch with friends having drinks over zoom yeah uh was also helpful for microsoft team yeah I, you bring up a lot there as when i've asked that question so many of the people in our data science community have play instruments. I cannot believe how musically inclined data scientists are. There is something, you know, music. I would say whether they like it or play it. I just think if I had to do a scatter plot of everyone on the on on the on the podcast, I can't believe we index with mu- mu- I don't know if they're good at music, but they've used this time to get back into something creative. So I yeah. think that's been great. I actually also felt then I also was part of the Chicago rapid response team we were delivering PPE equipment and uh and safety equipment for hospitals and behavioral centers where they probably were down the line from a priority in terms of what government was able to allocate resources for so it was actually a little bit of community work as well my son tagged along with me and it was it was fun to do as a as a family as well what month was that and what was the outbreak was that early was that late and what were you delivering uh, that cuz that's that was that time was mask right right mask, that, that um, was may was it like may june when it was like really bad like it was yeah it was it was may june july even yeah. we went all the way a little bit into the fall as well um yep. it was it was very difficult we were supplying from we had relationships with Lowe's and Walmart and I was picking up Tyvek you know those those sheets so that people could actually make these things because people were making PPE equipment from trash bags at that time so it was good that these companies like Lowe's were were yeah. donating those um, those supplies for us it was it was incredible what how the society came together to handle this it's been inspiring um i would agree it has um it has got me through some dark places just when i reflect on how you know just people have really come together to build i mean you always have the mask versus not mask debate but let's just let's take that as a corner case i guess but let's just talk about how companies innovated kept did their best to either keep their employees happy healthy engaged the advancement of just you know everybody was saying 18 months for a vaccine and it was done in 13 it's just um it's just amazing the human spirit it's it is to me um yeah i am sometimes i just don't have words and for me what what i did sharing my story is um i got back into journaling so i now and I talk about this but I I got back to journaling so that's been nice I started to do a lot of upping my self reflection game both on youtube videos on just polishing and thinking about it so I I really wanted to 
just get to a place of hyper awareness. And then I believe that the empathetic manager is the winner of this. The empathetic really? CEO is the winner. I think that to me is either co companies I want to be around anyway. Like, I think we're going to hit our numbers, not hit our numbers, but like, like it's just been nice to see a lot of people um, get there. And then I also have people that just will, will never get there and that's okay also, right? It's just, if you didn't get there now, it's just, I, you might not be on my podcast and there's nothing wrong with that. Just, you know, that. Um, Agreed. Yeah. And then the things I've heard about from other people when I asked that question, sharing here, some people, and I've done the same thing, said they've stopped watching cable news because that has been a source of like <laughs> up or down, like they don't watch cable news. That was one. Um, music has come up quite a bit. Music. Um, people have learned how to make drinks. So the drinks, puzzling. Right painting so creative stuff a lot of people said i got into like ordering on amazon like just like like painting like whatever whatever creative outlet just like painting you know so i thought that a lot of creative outlet one person we spoke with who's the ceo of pandio one of our sponsors he talked about how he just is very focused on saying like um what does he need now and like what's he grateful for like so right now what do i need if i'm thirsty i need water right if I'm tired, I need sleep. So then there was also just the don't get overwhelmed. Just like, what is your basic need in front of you just to get through? So I, it was just interesting to hear how everybody is getting through this. And there is no right. It's just, you know, keep learning. Um, okay. So now I'll tell you another story for, about me as um, I was in San Francisco, Silicon Valley. And when I had that story, and then I'm part of the San Francisco to Miami what up miami exodus so i'm in miami you uh do you move or you stayed i'm in chicago and i i stayed, stayed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so you stayed did you and the family did you even think was it even or like you're like or the family was like it's not going to happen like where where were you on this on this decision tree our son is in is a as a sophomore high schooler, so for us it was not even an option. But we did, we did go to the west west side of it. We were in the in the Naples area, and we rented a house for a few weeks in Florida. Smart. So that was it. That was all we did. <laughs> but you did it. Yep, good for you. I mean, for it's it's an interesting choice because you know we talk about empathy. There is there are some companies that didn't know what they were going to do. So it, it kind of froze some people's decisions because you don't know if you're going to get called back or not get called back. I moved. I, I, I moved. And, and not only did I move, um, going from San Francisco to Miami, I also donated like just about everything. Cause I'm like, I don't think any of the San Francisco clothing works in Florida. So I'm like, I'm just like, I don't really have a lot of bathing suits, but I'm like, you know, I think I have to buy bathing suits or different shoes. So that's been a, a cathartic experience also. Now your team, how many people on your team stayed in there versus you, they called you up and they said, listen, you know what? I'm going to be calling in from Hawaii, but I'll make every team meeting, but you will not see me. Like, what have you seen in your, your, your team? Actually, not a lot, uh, except for people doing this staycationing or vacationing. Staycationing? <laughs> <laughs> and apart from that, actually not a, not a lot. And it has been pretty interesting. People take people. This is also another phenomenon that I have started observing: is that people take vacations, but they are not really vacationing yeah. because they are logging in and out and sending emails here and there. It's just because they are still at home or don't have much to do, and they're right. on on their phones and replying back. But it's an interesting thing. This whole. But I haven't seen a lot of people uh, say, hey, you know what, I'm moving to a different location altogether and I'll work from there. Except for one person who has always been in that mode even before the pandemic. Yep. Uh, he's a sailor and he works from different cities, different times of the month, yeah. year. So apart from that, nothing actually yeah. crickets on that front. I, I tell everybody, this is, I tell people who are over 30, right? This is like your professional gap year. This is your backpack through America year. Like if you didn't get to do it when you were like 18 or 16 or 17, like, like I, I, I 
also moved back here. I got, I've got family on the West Coast and also on the East Coast of Florida, Naples by the Naples, Sarasota area and Miami area. And I said, you know, when else are you going to be able to spend time with your family like this when, for most cases, they're not sick? Like usually if you're going to spend extended time, it's someone's going to, in the hospital, out of the hospital, they're in hospice, something happened. There's a tragedy. I have to go home. I have to spend six weeks with my family because of X. This is a time in our life where you're with your family and most people, if there wasn't the COVID sickness, you were with your family. Like you're getting to spend time with your, your son at an age where you're going to look back. I still think you're going to look back in five years and just wish you spent more time. Like, it's just going to be one of those things. Like it's as much time as you can. That's what are your, what's your thoughts? Yeah. That's a, <laughs> for us, you, you phrased it really well. Uh, for us, it, some of these things, uh, we have been reflecting a little bit on those elements. And like you said, it worked out for us in that, in that manner that we are able to spend some time, um, like, like some quality time. But it has also been the other end where all of us are in three different corners of the world, of our house and doing our own stuff uh, as well. But but we have been thinking about it in that front, in those lines where the staycationing aspect of it was also one of those triggering elements for yeah. us. You know, we are, we're cooking together, for example, or <laughs> or we are... We are shopping together. We are uh, we're trying to help our local communities. My son accompanied me with with those trips, delivering PPE stuff around Chicago. And so, again, a, a different perspective. I don't know if you would have done that one if the pandemic didn't hit us. We would have done different kinds of things, but it did give us an opportunity yeah. to think in those lines. I agree. It's um, it's maybe it's you know. The younger generation, the kids, you know, maybe they're not as excited as we are. Like they're still home, but um, the fact that you know where you're going, you know, there's just a lot of good things about the, the relationships that we're seeing, um, and you know, being home to even be with your family and work with your family. I mean, there's so much, you know, up on this that it's been going on now for so long. I don't know how I can forget this time and go back to a commute. Like I still am human. Like, so I don't know, I'm not going to forget this. And now if my boss is like, Oh, look, vaccines up. So everyone get back to the office. We'll see you at nine o'clock for the meeting. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And that's, that's what my, my next thing I think about is when I look at like Twitter, Jack Dorsey, first mover to say, Nope, you never have to be in the office. Benny Hoff, um, CEO, founder, Salesforce, just only a couple of weeks ago yeah. said, okay, we're going to give you three options. There's some people that need the office. They like the office and you can remote in. I think everyone's being flexible, but like, I just, I don't see myself getting on the train at 752 and being scrammed in like this. Like, I, I think those days are over. Well, what are your thoughts? You're right. Uh, I would I would also think that it gives us a different kind of an opportunity to tap into talent, right? So with these with oh, these right. geographical boundaries being erased, um, we can now be far more open. We we not we are not guessing how a remote work environment will look like. We have lived almost a year with it. So I would say it is there is there is yeah. some silver lining there. It is it is definitely going to change how we're going to work in the, in the future but i do believe that it is also going to open up opportunities for individuals the way we we tap into diverse talent is going to change uh and these the so-called geographical boundaries will definitely be areas in the new world i'll tell you what i what i would like to see happen my ideal situation because right? mm -hmm. you just nailed it you you look at salaries and you rethink, and let me just finish the thought. All right, so let's say you're in Silicon Valley and an engineer, I'm making this up, right? We can all go through ranges. Let's just say the engineer makes $175,000, right? Now we can hire that talent anywhere. I wanna go into an inner city that we'd never hire from. Pick any country, I mean, any, any state, who cares? Um, we can say North Carolina, we can say Tennessee, right? pay that inner city 
the San Francisco wage. Lift everybody up. Stop with the nonsense of we'll have to rate it for that local community. So that 175 rate is 109. Don't penalize us. Right? Like we're not hiring the entire state of North Carolina that is going to move the needle. We're not going to hire the entire state of Tennessee. But you've already forecasted, you already know your hiring plan. You already forecasted that you need 10 engineers at 175. Go get them. Don't get penalize them. Because now if it's an inner city person in Tennessee and all of a sudden like the opportunity is there and then that wealth creation is there and then other things will happen. But I don't know your yeah. thoughts, but you know, that's what I'd like to see happen. Stop penalizing employees because they don't live in a very expensive zip code. It will have it will have a cascading effect. Uh, Boston Scientific is extraordinarily focused on health equity and stuff like that, right? So imagine if you are able to drive that kind of a financial resilience across the board. There is again uh, not have to be super utopian about some of these things, but social equity, health equity, and especially in these days when we talk about equity in multiple fronts, it is going to it is going to change the dynamic. And how many times you and I have been in conversations or met with, met somebody and you're like God, you know what? If you were in that location, I would have hired you, right? And and we walk out of this conversation. So the first conversation we have with any person is, "Hey, are you okay to relocate? Or are you <laughs> are you willing to travel? Or are you willing to this?" And how many times do we lose that kind of a talent? And and in some cases, for me, it just feels like now we have options open. And especially the Salesforce kind of a model, or Google model, or yep or Twitter models, there is a nice hybrid models that we can still yep. work in a nice environment. End of the day, there, uh, my team is globally distributed. We always have people on the phone. We always have people yep. on the video conferencing in. Not so, so why not do it? Yep. No, I, I, I agree. Um, our time goes by too fast. So um, I'd love to have you back. I don't know when, but this to me like I started off the show, is what I need. Um, so this to me was was great. I got to meet somebody in, in a place and have just a nice, quiet conversation. Because this is the other thing I felt as a data point. The beauty about this is if I would have met you for a, a, a drink, this is what would happen. A waiter, can we get this? A waiter, can I get a check? Oh, I see my friend. And then once we, once we check out, you're on your phone checking your email. Um, so I just also love this, that we are locked in. So this has been such a nice conversation and I'm so grateful that you're crazy enough to come on. So thank you, my man. Thank yeah. you so much, Darren, for your time yeah. as well. Yeah. I totally enjoyed it anytime. Yeah, and we're a community. So um, what I wanna do now, if it's again, like we talked about, connect you with five or six people that I think in the community, you would just get along with. and. You can choose if you want to Zoom with them, which is email, but I'd like to, you know, are you open if I make a couple of connections for you? Absolutely open. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right. Um, thanks for being on the podcast, my man. Um, Thank you and, so much for your time uh, as well, Dan. Yeah. And we're, we're sponsored by Pandio. And check Pandio out there, the leader in distributed messaging. <laughs>